JJ, the CPA here. Hope you're doing well. For PPP round two for the self-employed, it's going to be based again on your Schedule C. Now, here's some possible good news. You will be able to base it off of either 2019 Schedule C or your 2020 Schedule C. Now, if you're listening to this on or before December 31st, well, you know that you can't have a 2020 Schedule C yet because you got to wait for the year to close. The one thing I want you to note is that the amount that you qualify for is based off of Schedule C line 31, which is your net income, divided by 12 times two and a half. That's the amount that you qualify for. In essence, you could, if you're, if you have the need for it, you'd be able to pick the year that yields the most for you. You've already filed 2019. You would be able to know exactly what that is for 2020. I'm assuming you would be able to, like last time, go ahead and use an estimated amount for Schedule C. The problem with that is that when you go to file for forgiveness. So if you base it off 2020 and you're using an estimate, then just be prepared that you may have a different result of forgiveness. What you can do, though, is lickety split. Have your numbers ready to go so that you can have a Schedule C to know what that net income is going to be for 2020 to then determine and concretely know how much you will qualify either year. Assuming if you need it, then you'll be able to get the higher amount. The reason I also want to mention that to you is you don't have to file your full return because if PPP2 is rolling out right after the first of the year, we don't even have the ability to e-file any tax return typically until mid to late January. So you don't have to file the Schedule C in the sense of getting it to the IRS, but you really would want your Schedule C for 2020, if you're basing it off of that, to be what it is going to be when you file it so that you have a better figure. Also for the self-employed, what I just indicated is the amount that you qualify for, but you still have to meet the gross receipts test. So I'm going to put a link in the body of this video to another video that I did that walks you through how to just do a simple calculation of knowing if your gross receipts have reduced down more than 25% when comparing a quarter in 2020 to a quarter in 2019. So in that video, that applies to any and all businesses on the gross receipts test and you're taking quarter one of 2020 compared to quarter one of 2019 you do the same for second and third and fourth and if in one of those quarters your gross receipts is down more than 25 percent you qualify you have to also be in need of it you have to qualify yourself if you will that you're in need of it and then you will be getting this from the bank the application in essence will be from the bank right now um Let's see, it's 3.15 a.m. on December 23rd. It's not out yet. I believe the stimulus said that the SBA has around 14 days. I do want to mention to you that I do have a seminar directed towards the self-employed. I'm going to put a link in this. And in that seminar, I walk you through the PPP forgiveness, now called certification, um, while it's an easy form to complete, you still have to do the fairly straightforward, but you still have to do the calculation to determine what you're to be forgiven of. Also, I walk through step by step on how to determine what you get for PPP2, how to qualify for it, do the calculation, how to prepare it. And then there's also tax credits for the self-employed, like juicy self-employed tax credits. So the difference in the Zoom seminar that I'll put a link to 
uh, in the body of this is that it's a walkthrough. It's a step-by-step -step video and it'll be driven by a PowerPoint where you will get a copy of that. It's a one hour seminar with a one hour worth of Q&A. And if you know JJ the CPA, I'll probably go a little bit longer on that as well. So got spots still remaining on that, but it is filling up. It's just reality with Zoom. There's only so many seats. All right. Hey, thanks for tuning in. If you need the PPP2, get cracking on knowing where you stand for 2020 so that you would be able to then know what is the better year for you to get the PPP based off of. It'll still have the same limitations as before. It'll be no more than 100,000 on Schedule C. Line 31 is your beginning calculator. It's no more than 20,833. And again, this entire video was related to those that are self-employed that don't have any employees and file a Schedule C. So whether you're a sole proprietor, self-employed, gig worker, independent contractor, receive a 1099 and that's how you know what your filing is. Well, if you're filing a Schedule C, you're filing a Schedule F on the individual return, this video has applied to you. You're not considered self-employed if you own an S Corp and pay yourself wages through it or own a C Corp and pay yourself wages through it. And partners that own a partnership are not in the definition of self-employed except to the extent of the PPP on the Schedule C, what is going to be allocated to the self-employment earnings will then qualify. But I'll have a separate video on that. Know this, in the end, the calculations are the same as PPP1. The advantage is you get to also see if 2020 yields a maybe better result. Again, assuming that you need it. All right, hey, if you made it to here and you're not a subscriber, I'd love it if you would turn on the notifications, y'all. That way you know when I'm dropping a new video, you can check it out. All right, hey, thanks for tuning in. And then don't you ever forget, you've never met a CPA quite like me. All right, hey, have a great one.